they're going to rebrand the vacs by horsepower class. If you notice, it's a VX50, Vacuum Excavator 50. That's a 50 horsepower class machine. In the industry, you'll know that's a high CFM, a, a 1,025 CFM unit. So you'll see us vacuum excavator horsepower class and then tank size. C-channel frame on it. Um, it's an 8-inch C-channel frame on the bottom, so super strong chassis to handle the weight and the riggers of going off-road. Um, so that is a big, big, beefy chassis on it. The other thing you'll see is high ground clearance on it. Uh, when you get down into Texas, you talk to those folks down there, they all want a vac that goes down the road, but they also want to drag it down the right-of-way with whatever they're going to grab a hold of it with. So we made sure we kept it high, nothing below it um, from a ground clearance standpoint. Uh, control panel. Doesn't seem like a big thing, but as you tow vacs, they're towed a lot. And, and when you get into cold climates, uh, up in Canada where you got salt, slush, things like that, you want to keep your controls away from the mud flaps. So a lot of folks get a control panel on the front, get the control panel away and lockable. Um, so lockable control panel on it. This chassis is being set up when you're in the 49 horsepower class, you, you're going to be put into a tier four final category. So doing the chassis upgrade as we put a tier four final. So this is also our tier four chassis. Um, construction equipment, you know, you got filters and you got those sort of things that you deal with. Uh, we put an auto tensioner belt system on the design. So if you would have to put belts on for maintenance or, or you need to change a belt, very quick and simple design. Literally unload the pulley, put a set of bolt belts on it, self tensions. Um, very quick, very accessible, very nice for, for just maintenance and servicing a machine. In keeping with that on service and maintenance, all remote drains uh, on the bottom of the machine. So for servicing, instead of looking where you're going to drain it and drop it out, you put it all right on the side of the machine. Um, from a vac standpoint, you do a lot of sucking up material, potholing, drill mud. Occasionally, you'll suck up a rock or debris and you plug your, your inlet hose. Um, to get that unplugged, traditionally, people will take the hose off and shake it, try to get the, the rock unclogged. Um, this vac comes standard with reverse pressure. So if you're potholing and you suck up a big rock and you would get it lodged, simply the operator would come here and instead of having suction on the back this would give you reverse pressure and allow you to, to remove that rock with pressure um, that's a standard feature on this back um, this is our final filter before you go to the, the vacuum blower um, there's a three-stage filtration system on this back uh, that would be the final filter we mount cyclones as standard on all backs so cyclonic filtration provides a third stage of filtration generally you'd go tank to your filter element that I showed you on the other side. What we do between the tank and our final filter, we mount cyclones with a catch trap below them. And what it does is we take that airstream and actually put it through these cyclones, allow that to spin, and any of your small particulates drop out in your can right here. And when you dump your vac, you dump your small, and it looks like vacuum cleaner dust in here. And uh, these cyclones, what it does, those filter elements are, are a maintenance and a, and a wear item. So if you're packing those filters up, that's a 280 300 dollar depends on the size of your filter filter every time you save a filter you're saving your operator and whether you're a rental store or a contractor you're saving yourself 300 dollars of operating cost these filters save contractors over the life of the machine a lot of their operating costs uh, on the side here filling up with water you hear more and more water companies wanting to have an air gap uh, as you fill water in the directional drilling industry you're hearing they want to see an air gap. We've incorporated an air gap for a quick fill. As you fill one tank on one side, we've got a crossover that fills the other tank at the same time. This has got a, a patented cam over rear door design, and it's got this linkage here. And, and what this system does is, is hydraulically you close that door, and as that door closes, it comes over a, a center cam, and, and we can run this on the back. It comes over a cam over on center. <coughs> and loads the door across the back and gives you a good 360 degree seal. That hydraulic lock in that cam over design, it's an all external door design, very robust, three quarter inch plate steel, great rear seal on the door. Uh, this is the actual seal out of the back. It's a big D-ring seal, sits in that channel and that whole surface compresses on there and compresses that D-ring, gives you a fantastic seal on, on the rear door. So. And, and what we've done on our, our second generation back is open this door instead of opening to a 45 degree angle, we've opened this up to an 80 degree angle.